So what we're going to learn about in this video is the shorthand for some of the series, which is called Sigma Notation. So this is what we're going to see, what it's going to look like. You're going to see the Greek letter Sigma. Okay. What I have written down here is K equals the number, and I just put a subscript of F. Okay. So the first term and number L, that represents the last term. So what this number down here represents is going to be the first term of the series that you will be adding. And this is going to be the last term of the series that you will be adding. And this f of k, okay, represents the function that finds you or that finds the term in the series in position k. So I'm going to give you an example. Okay. So here's an example of sigma notation. And what this indicates to you, okay, this indicates to you that you have a series, which means you are getting the sum. Okay. You're going to be adding up from the second term to the two and including, okay, don't forget, and including the eighth term. Okay, now this 3k plus 1, this is how you can find the second term. This is how you can find the eighth term. This is the formula that allows you to get the term in the sequence. So, to get the second term in this sequence, I would do 3 times 2 plus 1. That's going to give me 7. To get the eighth term in this series, okay, I know I say sequence and series because this is coming from a sequence, that's going to be 3 times 8 plus 1. And so that's going to be 24 plus 1. It's going to be 25. Now, you know that this is an arithmetic sequence, or I should say an arithmetic series that you're working with, because this is linear. If this is linear, okay, you know all about linear functions, okay? You have a constant rate of change. As x increases by 1, you have a constant value you keep increasing by. So every time you see sigma and this is linear, you know you're working with an ar arithmetic series. So what this is saying is, I got to find the sum from the second to the eighth term. So... S of 2 is 7. I'm sorry, A of 2 is 7. A of 8 is 25. Now, here's the million dollar question. How many terms are there if you're counting the second all the way up to and including the eighth term? So you're counting second term, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Do not get confused from an arithmetic sequence of how you did change in position. This is not talking about change in position. This is talking about how many total value, um, terms do you have here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven total terms. If you just do eight minus two, you are getting how many exist from after 2 to 8, but you have to include this too. So what you always do is you just add 1, okay? And that's going to give you the 7. If you're just trying to figure out what n is, okay, you take this number, you subtract this number, but then you have to add 1 because 8 minus 2 will just give you this here, but you have to also include that. So you add one term. So... The sum of this series is going to be S of 7 equals 7 plus 25 over 2 times 7. And that's going to give us 32 over 2 times 7, which is going to give us 
16 times 7, which is going to give us 112. So the sum of the series from the second up to and including the eighth term is 112. So now we'll just do it four more times. We're just going to practice finding the sum of each arithmetic series. Notice they all have linear functions. So these are all going to be arithmetic series. So when we worked with arithmetic sequences, we talked about different letters. We didn't really use K. It's just that when you have sigma notation, sometimes you'll see K. You don't have to. This could be any letter here. And this letter will be the same as, as what goes right here, okay? So now this might look a little funky. How am I getting, um, if this is, the, this is the explicit rule for finding any given term? Well, that's because when we had our rule, okay, if we think back to our arithmetic sequence, let's say um, to find A of N, it, we had 1 plus 5 times N minus 1, okay? If I was to actually distribute that, and then just write it as minus 4 plus 5n, that's where this is coming from. So I, we could have done this every time we wrote the explicit, explicit rule, but you didn't have to, okay? So these are actually just the explicit rule for the arithmetic sequence, okay? Just with a different letter and where you have um, distributed this, this common difference. So... First problem, we're going to be adding up from the first to the 16th term, okay? So we need to get the first term. We need to get the 16th term. So 4 times 1 minus 2, that's going to be 2. 4 times 16 minus 2, that's going to be 62. Now, how many terms are there in total? If you're starting with the first, going to the 16th, there are 16 total terms. So 16 minus 1 plus 1, that gives us 16. So the sum of the first 16 terms, I'm sorry, of the 16 terms here, is going to be whatever this calcu um, computation gives us. So that's going to give us 64 over 2 times 16. I'm just going to move my work up here. That's going to give us 32 times 16, and that is going to give us 512. Okay. So, second problem, it says that we are going from the 0 position to the 15th. Now, there are times when you might be in a class in which, instead of saying the first term in the sequence is in the position 1, you might say the first term in the sequence is in position 0. When you have application problems and the applications mimic a sequence in which it's arithmetic or geometric, there is an advantage to calling the first term the zeroth position. And that is because that represents the starting position. And if you think graphically, okay, when does something start? It starts when x is zero, okay? So that's why you might have the zeroth position there. So we just have to be careful. So we have to know what a of zero is. We have to know what a of 15 is. And then 15 minus zero plus one, there are 16 total terms here. So negative three times zero plus eight, eight. Negative three times 15 plus eight, that is going to give us negative 37 okay so now we need to just get the sum of the first um the 16 terms that we have here so that's going to be 8 plus negative 37 over 2 times 16 and that gives us negative 200 32. Okay, in the third problem, we're going to be starting the sum of the series at the seventh term and ending the sum at the 25th term. So we need the seventh term. So the seventh term is 15. And we need the 25th term. So the 25th term. 
51. And how many terms are there in total that we're adding? 25 minus 7 plus 1. That gives us 20, um, 19. So some of the first, I'm sorry, not the first 19 terms. The sum of these 19 terms is going to be the average of 15 and 51 times the total number of terms that we got going on here, which is 19. And the average is 33 times 19, which gives us... 627 and so why don't you pause the video and do the fourth one on your own once you get your answer play the video so k equals 5 above sigma is 29 and the formula is negative 2k plus 3 so once you finish that play the video check to see if you got it right so i'm going from the fifth up to and including the 29th so that's going to be negative 2 times 5 plus 3 that's going to be negative 10 plus 3. That's going to be negative 7. Negative 2 times 29 plus 3. So that's going to be negative 58 plus 3. That's going to be negative 55. And now we get the total number of terms that we've got going on in this series. So 29 minus 5 plus 1. So that gives us, there are 25 total terms here. So, to get the sum of these 25 terms, get the average of the 5th and the 29th term. Multiply it, whoops, by the number of terms, 25. And so, that's going to be, the average is negative 31. Now we got to times that by 25. And we get negative 775. So, of course, the sum of a, an arithmetic series can be negative. That is because you have terms that are negative. And if you have all terms that are negative, then if you just keep adding all negative terms, you're going to get negative, uh, a negative sum. And sometimes you can have positive and negative terms. It's just whichever um, when you add them all up, you're either going to have more that were positive your sum's going to be positive or it's going to be negative. But don't think you did anything wrong if you get a negative sum for a series. And that is it for the introduction of sigma notation with specific respect to an arithmetic series.